The 2020 Summer Olympics are going down in history for a number of reasons, from being the most expensive to date, to fans cheering with signs, to organizers asking fans not to line the streets. Protests erupted over the weekend in several European cities. That says governments are getting tougher with new lockdowns and vaccination mandates. And Dr. Anthony Fauci says new mask mandates are under consideration, even for the vaccinated. But he added that the CDC still advises that vaccinated Americans don't need to wear them. Tune into Deep Dive as we explore these topics and more. Hello and welcome. This is Deep Dive and I'm Tiffany Meyer. The 2020 Olympics going down in history as one of the more unusual ones for a number of reasons. One of the biggest differences, the lack of fans. Organizers asked fans to stop watching roadside events like cycling and the triathlon. That's after a hundred showed up to line the streets Monday to watch the men's triathlon. Tokyo remains under a state of emergency due to the pandemic. On Monday, there were 16 new reported cases related to the Games, bringing the total number this month to 148. As for the medalists, they're allowed to remove their masks on the podium for 30 seconds for a socially distanced photo op. That's the new rule from the International Olympic Committee, but it confirmed on Sunday that masks are otherwise mandatory across all Tokyo game venues at all times, including medal ceremonies for staff, athletes and media. Spectators have mostly been absent from the games and the few who are able to watch are cheering in a different way, not with their voices, but by holding up signs. And many are wondering why the Games are still called the 2020 Olympics when the year is 2021. One of the biggest factors is money. An Oxford study published last year shows the Tokyo Olympics are the most expensive Summer Olympics to date. The postponement was only upping costs. Titled Regression to the Tail, Why the Olympics Blow Up, the study found Tokyo spending is at $15.84 billion dollars. That's already surpassing the 2012 London Olympics, which were the most expensive summer games to date. That game was at $14.95 billion. But the yearly delay was projected to add several billion to that number. And organizers said last Tuesday the cost went up over 20% due to the delay, which is costing an extra $2.8 billion. Organizers said it went up from the $12.6 billion in last year's budget to $15.4 billion. But keeping merchandise with the old dates is nothing new. Other 2020 events like the Kentucky Derby and the NCAA tournament are in the same boat. But despite some feeling uneasy about the Olympics, some are calling it a sign of hope amid the pandemic. Pope Francis blessed the organizers, athletes and those involved in the Tokyo 2020 Olympics during his Sunday blessing. Saying, quote, in this time of the pandemic, these games are a sign of hope, a sign of universal brotherhood in the name of healthy competition. Japan isn't the only country upping restrictions due to the pandemic. Several European cities saw protests over the weekend as governments are getting tougher with new lockdowns and vaccination mandates. Anti-vaccine passport and anti-lockdown protests broke out across Europe on Saturday, with riot police firing tear gas as clashes erupted in some cities. In France, around 160,000 demonstrators took to the streets of Paris, opposing the introduction of a vaccine passport bill now pending in the French parliament. The bill would force people to show proof of vaccination or recent testing to enter restaurants and other public areas. It also includes some of the toughest anti-COVID measures in Europe, like compulsory vaccinations for all healthcare workers. But critics have called it unnecessarily harsh. As the country faces a fourth wave of infections, the government says new lockdowns cannot be ruled out. In London, protesters march from Trafalgar Square to Downing Street, shouting freedom and shame on you towards police officers. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson said last week that from the end of September, proof of full vaccination will be required to get into nightclubs and other crowded venues. Johnson's government is betting that England can reopen as fully vaccinated people are less likely to get seriously ill with COVID. On the same day, demonstrators in Dublin called on the Irish government to lift the lockdown and mask measures. According to videos posted online, thousands of Italian protesters gathered in Rome, Naples, Verona and Milan to oppose a vaccine passport-like system.
Foreign media also reported that on Saturday, some 4,000 people protested against mandatory vaccinations outside the Greek parliament in central Athens. Now, as to the United States, masks could be making a comeback. Dr. Anthony Fauci says new mask mandates are under consideration, even for the vaccinated. He told CNN Sunday that federal health officials are considering recommending that fully vaccinated people wear masks in public again. This is under active consideration. If we don't vaccinate people, the model is going to predict that we're going to be in trouble as we continue to get more and more cases. Some areas, including Los Angeles County and Chicago, recently said that everyone, regardless of vaccination status, should wear masks in public settings. And the CDC also recommended that unvaccinated children wear masks when they return to school in the fall. That's a local decision that's not incompatible with the CDC's overall recommendations that give a lot of discretion to the locals. It's because the officials there, many of them are saying, even if you're vaccinated, it's prudent to wear a mask indoors. Fauci did not say why vaccinated people should wear masks. Some officials, including New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio, said it would cause people to lose confidence in the vaccines and questioned why both should be required. And Florida Governor Ron DeSantis said last week that Florida would not impose mask mandates at public schools, regardless of the CDC's guidance. A study published in the Journal of American Medical Association in April found that children are at low risk of developing COVID and don't play a significant role in spreading it. Fauci's faced pushback from Republicans who say he's given conflicting advice, including calling masks ineffective in one leaked email from early 2020. And now New York City will soon require vaccinations for all employees. Anyone not vaccinated will have to get COVID-19 tested once a week. Mayor Bill de Blasio announced the mandate starts September 13th. This is about our recovery. This is about what we need to do to bring back New York City. This is about keeping people safe. This is about making sure our families get through COVID okay. This is about bringing back jobs, you name it. In September, everything's going to come together. September is the pivot point of the recovery. September is when many employers are bringing back a lot of their employees. September is when school starts full strength. September is when people come back from the summer. September is when it will all happen. The vaccine and test mandate starts in August for the some 45,000 employees who work in foster care, shelters, or senior centers. The Blasio says workers who refuse to follow the policy will face consequences. He added that private companies should also consider vaccine requirements. Speaking of New York, one of the scandals that emerged during the pandemic was Governor Andrew Cuomo's nursing home scandal. Cuomo, along with a few other Democratic governors, all ordered nursing homes to accept residents who had tested positive for the virus. That's despite health groups warning at the time that the policy placed other residents there at risk. And now the Department of Justice says it won't be investigating any of the governors who order that move. Critics say those governor's orders led to unnecessary deaths of facility residents. Federal officials reviewed information from New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania and Michigan, but then decided not to open an investigation. All of the governors are Democrats. Representative Steve Scalise is the highest ranking Republican on the House Coronavirus Committee. He released a statement saying it is outrageous that the Department of Justice refuses to investigate the deadly must admit orders issued by governors in New York, Pennsylvania and Michigan that resulted in the deaths of thousands of senior citizens. Scalise says the governor's orders contradicted CDC guidance at the time and needlessly endangered elderly Americans. The CDC issued guidance in March 2020 that facilities could accept COVID-positive residents as long as they could adhere to infection prevention protocols. The guidance recommended that facilities have separate units to care for COVID-19 patients. And health groups sounded an alarm about the governor's orders putting residents in danger. Each of the four states had a high percentage of deaths among nursing home residents. None of the governors have commented on the Justice Department's decision. And now, what about schools? The mask debate is heating up there as well. Some school districts are requiring masks for everyone. Others are making it optional. The piecemeal approach over masks in schools is causing confusion across the country. At least eight states from Arizona to Vermont prohibit school districts from requiring masks. 
And in many states, it's up to the districts, with the largest ones like New York City, L.A. and Chicago requiring masks. While Miami, Houston and Hillsborough County in Florida are keeping it optional. Many communities are also looking at COVID-19 testing strategies as schools plan to reopen. In March, the federal government gave states $10 billion to implement coronavirus surveillance testing in K-12 schools across the country. Some health officials and school districts are still deciding the best way to spend that money. But what do you think? Let me know below. Thanks for tuning in to Deep Dive. I'm Tiffany Meyer, and see you soon.